This document written by Medicare to guide insurance companies and physicians on when a plan and copay can be charged it clearly states that telehealth visits and urgent care are exempt from that copay. So how is it that we're now seeing people charge the $20 copay for telehealth and urgent care? What else has changed? So you've decided on a Medicare supplement plan. Good decision. But which one? Which supplement plan will be right for you both today and as you age? There are a number of videos with headlines like what is the best supplement plan for 2024 or whatever year. I find this odd because one of the benefits of a Medicare supplement is that the benefits never change. They are literally written into Social Security law. It takes an act of Congress to change a Medicare supplement plan benefit. Even then, they can only change benefits for people who have not yet enrolled, grandfathering in those already with a plan. Unless, of course, Medicare as a bureaucracy simply changes some rules. Well, we're going to get into that in a minute. Still, how can there be a different best plans from one year to the next? The simple truth is that the right supplement plan for you is the one that will fit your personality and remain within your budget. In this video, I will help you identify which Medicare supplement plan that you'll most likely to be happiest with and I'm going to accomplish this without showing you a, a table of benefits and pointing out the deductible and the gaps and all that stuff. It, it's just not necessary. So why do people choose a Medicare supplement anyway? It's very simple. People who choose the Medicare supplement route instead of a Medicare Advantage plan do so because they want to keep the two most important benefits of original Medicare. What are those benefits? First, you're not limited by a network. With a Medicare supplement, you can see any doctor go to any medical facility in the U.S. or U.S. territory as long as they accept original Medicare. That is almost every doctor and medical facility in the country. Second, no insurance company has a say in your health care. Now, Medicare's intent is to cover everything that's medically necessary and they lean on your doctor to determine medical necessity. Your health care decisions are between you and your doctor. No pre-authorizations required. Keeping those two benefits of original Medicare are overwhelmingly the deciding factor for those who choose a Medicare supplement plan over a Medicare Advantage plan. You get to keep the benefits of original Medicare regardless of which supplement plan you choose or even which insurance company you decide to go with. You can be in the worst Medicare supplement plan or the best Medicare supplement plan. They all maintain original Medicare as your primary insurance with all of its benefits. Now, if you've seen my other videos on Medicare supplement plans, you know that the three plans with a cost to benefit ratio that should be considered are the Plan G, the Plan N, and in some areas of the country, the Plan G or F high deductible. So let's start with this simple but very important assertion. The debate between Medicare Supplement Plan G versus Medicare Supplement Plan N is not one of benefits and costs, but of personality. Your personality. Let me show you. Medicare Supplement Plan G offers the most health coverage of any Medicare supplement that's available to those who are new to Medicare. With a Plan G, you can spend a year in the hospital as an inpatient, and inpatient services will not cost you a dime. Your inpatient services are covered at 100%. With a Plan G, your only expenses for inpatient and outpatient Medicare bills is the annual Medicare Part B deductible. Part B is Medicare's outpatient and physician's services insurance. When you see a doctor for the first time during the calendar year, you will pay the Medicare Part B deductible. Once you've paid that deductible, you have 100% coverage for the rest of the calendar year. As I make this video, the 2024 Medicare Part B deductible 
is just $240. You pay that once during the calendar year if and when you see the doctor. That's it. After that, you have 100% inpatient and outpatient coverage. And by the way, have you seen my video showing the official estimates of the Part B deductible and monthly premiums going all the way out to 2032? So check the link above my left shoulder for that. All right, so where were we? Oh yeah, Plan G is what I referred to almost a decade ago in one of my first videos as the peace of mind plan. People who choose a Medicare supplement Plan G just want great coverage and they don't want to have to think about their health care or medical bills. It's just paid for. It offers complete peace of mind. Think of it this way. To the person who chooses a Medicare Supplement Plan G, that peace of mind coverage is more important than the extra money it costs. For Plan G people, peace of mind is more important than the extra premium. It's that simple. So let's compare that to the Medicare Supplement Plan N. Medicare Supplement Plan N has less insurance coverage than the Plan G, and with the right insurance company, Plan N will cost less over your lifetime. But there's a catch beyond just the lower premium. We need to look at this closely to understand. A Medicare Supplement Plan N is just like Plan G in that you can spend a year in the hospital as an inpatient, and your inpatient care won't cost you a dime. You have a 100% inpatient coverage. Also, just like Plan G, you must pay the annual Medicare Part B deductible if and when you see a doctor for the first time during a calendar year. But here's where this plan is different. With a Plan N, whenever you see a doctor for a diagnosis or evaluation, you will pay up to a $20 copay. It doesn't matter if it's a primary care doctor or a specialist. It's no more than $20. Technically, it's 20% of the medical bill up to a maximum of $20. If you go into an emergency room, there is up to a $50 copay, and that's waived if you end up staying as an inpatient in the hospital. Now, this is important, and it's often misunderstood. The $20 copay is for diagnosis and evaluation visits only. There's no copay for physical therapy. There's no copay for when you get a flu shot. And there's no copay if you end up with uh, chemotherapy infusions once a week. What is a diagnosis or evaluation? When you go to the doctor's office to find out what's ailing you, that's a meeting for a diagnosis. When the doctor has you trying a new prescription or other treatment and you meet with your doctor to see if that treatment is working, that's an evaluation. When Plan N was new, Medicare published this document about when to apply the copay. It's titled, Revised Questions and Answers Regarding the Implementation of Medicare Supplement Plan N Copayment Deductible and Coinsurance. Who'd have thought? Now, this document was written by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Medicare, to guide insurance companies and physicians on when a plan and copay can be charged. And you can find this, by the way, it's going to be linked below in the show notes. And it clearly states that the telehealth visits and urgent care are exempt from the deductible. So, how is it that we now see people charge the $20 copay for telehealth and urgent care? So this guidance specifically refers to medical billing codes that are used for office visits. However, during the pandemic, telehealth became popular for obvious reasons. In fact, telehealth medical visits, get this, increased 30-fold according to Medicare. That's a lot. So Telehealth has evolved from a single billing code category to nine different categories and dozens of separate billing codes. In addition, more and more people are ditching their primary care doctor and just using urgent care instead. And there are several reasons for this that we're not going to get into in this video. So Medicare was very cognizant of these changes and allowed for urgent care and some telehealth to use the same billing codes that trigger the Medicare plan and co-payment of up to $20. That way, Medicare is not overcharged in the case of using urgent care like a primary care provider or the doctor underpaid, as was the case with telehealth. 
Medicare, though, has not yet updated this memo. It's still the only memo on CMS.gov providing guidance to the plan and copay. Hopefully it'll be updated someday. For now, plan and policyholders should assume that any doctor's visits intended to diagnose or evaluate a medical condition will be eligible for that up to $20 plan and copay. And this now includes urgent care and some telehealth meetings. The other difference between Plan N and Plan G is Part B excess charges. Plan N has no insurance to pay excess charges. Are excess charges a big deal? No. There are some YouTube videos that suggest that 10% of Medicare doctors charge an excess charge and if you end up in surgery you can be surprised billed by your doctor or anesthesiologist or anyone else who visits you while you're in the hospital. And of course they also suggest that more and more doctors will charge excess charges in the future. That's simply not true. None of it. I did a video recently called Medicare Excess Charges Are Dead linked above my left shoulder and in the show notes below. In that video I show using Medicare's own statistics on excess charges showing that only 2% of doctors have a contract that allows them to charge an excess charge, half of whom are in the mental health industry. Only 0.3% of Medicare bills include an excess charge. There are also no excess charges allowed for emergency or urgent care services and doctors must notify you in advance before charging an excess charge. There's no surprise billing allowed and Medicare has had that rule for more than a decade. In the video, Excess Charges Are Dead, I point out how you can tell if a doctor charges an excess charge before you see them because they'll end up asking you to pay up front. And I talk about why that is the case in that video. As far as trend, the number of doctors charging excess charges has been in a steady decline every year since 2010. In 2016, it was 4% of doctors could charge an excess charge. In 2020, it was down to 3%, and now it's 2%, and I suspect that it's going to reach 1% in the next two years. I go over why there is a declining trend in that video as well. The bottom line is although excess charges are your responsibility if you have a plan and supplement, most people will go through their entire Medicare experience without ever coming across a doctor that has a contract that allows them to charge an excess charge. So getting back on track about plan N as a choice. People who choose a Medicare supplement plan N do so because they like saving money. They don't mind being responsible for knowing if their doctor charges an excess charge because they know that that small task saves money. So the person who best fits a Medicare supplement plan in is the person who wants to save money and enjoys participating or doesn't mind participating and um, taking on a small responsibility to save that money. It's the same person who might enjoy using coupons, for example, or wait for a sale to buy something that they want, or maybe drive a few blocks out of the way to save some money on gas. The Plan N person values being in control of their health care, but also values being budget conscious. They decide on Plan N because they see it as a better value than Plan G. So tell me, which personality are you? Are you a peace of mind personality that would prefer a Medicare supplement plan G? Or are you more interested in saving money with a Medicare supplement plan N? And by the way, if you're not 100% sure which plan fits you, I'd like to add one other thought here. The Medicare supplement plan N can save a person between $15 and $50 a month in premiums. It depends on where you live. So what I like to do to compare the cost versus value of a Medicare supplement plan G and plan N is to measure the price difference in office visit copays. Remember the $20 office visit copay? How many office visits per month each month would it take for plan N not to be a better value relative to plan G? 
again, both are good plans. They're just for people with different personalities. People that want peace of mind coverage value that peace of mind over the higher premium costs. People that want to save money are bothered more by the higher premiums than by the simple act of looking up their doctor to make sure they don't charge an excess charge. So please let me know which personality are you. In the comments below, just write plan G person or, or plan N person. But what I want to do is tally them up over time and see which personality is more common. And I'm going to put the result in a pinned comment in the section after we've gotten enough replies. Now the last time I did this, and this was years ago, we had 33% plan N votes versus 59% plan G. So let's see if that's changed. So please give me a moment of your time and let me know in the comments below which personality are you. And when we have enough votes, I'll tally them together and we can all see who wins. In the meantime, please press the like button below and share this video with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe because there's a lot more coming. I'm Matthew Clausen with MedigapSeminars.org. Thank you for watching.